Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Drivers of Reaction module. This is the final video, number 18, and in this one we're going to just work through an example of why temperature can be such an important factor in affecting the spontaneity of a particular chemical reaction. One of the things that's a little bit tricky when we're looking at Gibbs free energy is that we're trying to do it without an understanding of a very important concept called equilibrium. Not all reactions go to completion. Some of them um, actually have a reverse reaction occurring where in this case, an example of a synthesis reaction where um, the two elements, nitrogen and hydrogen combine to form ammonia. Now, one of the things that can happen in this reaction is rather than it proceeding to completion, some of the ammonia can actually break down and or decompose into its component elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. And a natural equilibrium will actually be reached where this process of both forward and reverse reactions are happening at the same rate. One of the other things that's very important about this is that the rate of this particular reaction can be, or the position of the equilibrium in any case, can be temperature dependent. And we can also use this understanding of Gibbs free energy to help us to determine exactly where the um, spontaneous point is. In order for us to do that, we need to recall our previous uh, reaction, or our previous mathematical relationship, I should say. Um, which is uh, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. When we look at this particular equation, um, we note that, of course, for a spontaneous reaction, the delta G needs to be a negative value. And we can look at the uh, molar um, free energy of formation in order for us to get an example of what's going on here. So we can do that. We've looked at um, the uh, heat of formation for compounds in the past, and we've used our understanding of Hess's law to um, look at uh, various processes where there are multiple steps in order to work out the overall delta H value. Um, this can also be done with entropy and also with Gibbs free energy. In this case, we can use our understanding of the Gibbs free energy expression in order to actually find out what's going on with temperature in this case. So one of the things that we want to look at is the fact that for uh, at equilibrium, the delta G value is zero. So once we go beyond that point, or at least once we get a value where the delta G is a uh, negative value, then we get a spontaneous reaction. So if we want that to be negative, um, then effectively what must happen is that um, our, if we rearrange the expression uh, for delta G, we can get uh, delta H is equal to plus T delta S. Now this is at the point where delta G equals zero. So effectively zero, um, I've substituted zero into this term here and then just rearranged it by moving the T delta S onto the opposite side. Now for this particular uh, reaction, these two are constants, these two are values which are given. So therefore what's important is if we rearrange this particular equation so that we get T being equal to um, delta H divided by delta S. More importantly, when we look at this term here, if we want to have a negative term, then this term here is the one that must be in magnitude larger than this term here, so that we actually ensure that we end up with a negative value. Uh, so we can actually change our value here to ensure that that is actually the case. In order to do that, what we do is first of all, substitute some values in. So um, the delta H value, now again, we've just got to be very careful with our units here. Notice that when I look at these two units, our delta H value is in kilojoules per mole, but our delta S value is in joules per mole per Kelvin. So 
it's easiest again if I keep them in the same unit. So if we change the delta H value into joules, I get 91,800. And I'm going to divide that by 198 because that's already in joules. And what I find is the value comes out to about 464 Kelvin. Uh, that being the case, what I want to do is I then want to um, work out uh, what that might be in degrees Celsius. So if I want that in degrees Celsius, then what I need to do is subtract 273 and I end up with 191 degrees Celsius. So that's telling me that at that temperature, we have a spontaneous reaction. Now, logically, we can work out whether or not the temperature needs to be greater than 191 uh, or less than 191 for spontaneous reaction. So how would we do that? Well, when we go back to our original expression up here, our delta H value is a negative value. And we want, we've got a value here, which is a T delta S value. And this is also a negative value. So when we multiply a negative and a negative, we're going to end up with a positive value here. So therefore, if our value is too high in terms of its magnitude, then it's going to turn this negative value into a positive value. Therefore, in order for us to make sure that we have something that is a spontaneous process, we actually need the temperature to be less than 191 degrees or less than 464 Kelvin. As long as the temperature is lower than this, then we have a spontaneous reaction. Um, if you use this, this logic in order to work these things out, if you're mathematically strong enough to rearrange equations with um, greater than or less than signs, then that also works. But using the logical case, I think, helps to make sure that when you put these values back into your equation, you'll know exactly what that is. Simply, um, if you multiply, if you say pick a value like 500, which is a high temperature, multiply that through, you'll end up finding that you end up with a positive number, which is a non-spontaneous reaction. And that's the good thing about algebra. Once you put some of these numbers in, once you've found the value yourself, you can very quickly work out whether you're going to end up with positives or negative values. That's it for the um, year 11 course. Um, Plenty of practice is what's needed just to make sure that you're comfortable with this mathematical stuff. And we will look at uh, equilibrium as one of our HSC courses. And those videos will be going up very soon. Thank you for watching.